Hello, everybody. I'm going to uh, be speaking today on WebRTC, which is my, one of my favorite topics. I feel like I'm preaching to the, to the choir a little bit here because I do love WebRTC. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, it was written that I have a WebRTC tattoo, but that is not true. Or if it is true, I am not going to show it to anybody. Um, but uh, today I want to talk not just about WebRTC, but a little bit about value creation but first, I want to catch you up. I did a November talk, which had about maybe a tenth of what is here. So I want to talk a little bit about what I talked about in November in two slides. The first slide is talking about where we are from a technology intersection point. First, we have ubiquitous computing, which I think is finally here. Second, wearables and wearable technology. Third, Internet of Things. All of these things are combining into what I call the human contextual moment. And that's really where the webification of communications and next generation communications is all coming together. First of all, human. This communication industry that we're in and trying to do is about humans connecting with humans. Contextual, not only about where you are in your devices, in able, being able to change endpoints from the web to mobile, but also contextual about where you are in place. And then moment, I truly think that the real power of WebRTC and the technologies that we're developing about, around real-time communications are able to affect business moments, affect business processes, and embed those human contextual moments inside of the business process. So with that now, I want to take, so that was last November, and I want to come now and take you to value change. So technology change like WebRTC equals value change. And value change creates new markets, and WebRTC, I believe, is a disruptive technology. But let's get a little Michael Porter. What is value? So value is the creation of wealth or saving wealth, or, the save, or saving time. So that's what value is. And how has value been changing as technology changes? Here's one great example. What's a value change that's definitely going to be affected? As Google smart cars and everybody, I think, believes, how many people think that smart cars are an ev inevitable conclusion of the technology where we are? I, I believe that. So I think eventually Google smart cars and other smart cars will be driving on the road. Not everybody will drive them, but the majority of people will drive them. And they will drive the speed limit and they will get us there on time, actually faster because they will keep traffic jams from happening. But there's some value that's in the system that's going to go away. We're going to create value, create more time for ourselves, create other, other things. But the value that's going to go away it's a tax that's currently on the system because nobody will be speeding, so there will be no speeding tickets. So there's a huge change in value in that technology coming to bear. So is WebRTC that type of disruptive technology? Well, if you don't show Dean's chart um, and a keynote, then you're not doing the keynote right. So up and to the right, 4 billion uh, connections by the end of 2016, uh, potential connections. But that's not the only up and to the right chart. I put a few more up and to the right charts. The first one is global data on mobile. I mean, look, look at that, 11.2 exabytes, I think that's right, uh, by 2017. And those dots from the dark blue to the light blue are increases of traffic by region uh, over, across the world. Here is just the Internet of Things up into the right chart, which gets crazy. Um, the prediction is that by 2017, the Internet of Things connections alone will surpass PC, tablet, and phone connections combined. Um, so we're going to see a doubling in the connections total uh, by 2017. So what does that mean to the overall economic value system that we're in? Well, this is a very simplified chart, but it is really a chart that speaks to the change and disruptive point that we're in today. In the past, the communication ecosystem value was derived mostly from traditional telecom value, and the user got a certain amount of that, and the vendor, the, the orangish yellow bar 
is what the traditional telecom vendors got as part of that value, either the vendors or the providers or the, the service providers. And there was some over the top and web communications being done, but not very much. Where are we today? Well, that, that technology disruption is already creating over the top and web value. We're seeing over the top companies gaining more value. We're seeing telecom, traditional telecom companies moving into over the top and moving into non-traditional. And we're also seeing some of their traditional businesses lose the value. But the, at the same time, the user value is getting to be more and the overall value is getting to be more. We're all able to make more calls. We're all able to connect and communicate much more readily. So the overall value is going up. In the future, that's accelerated and more of the same thing. So we're going to continue to see the over-the-top web value increase, the user value increase, and the traditional telecom value decrease, which doesn't mean that this chart is inevitable. I believe that the traditional telecom providers are going to and are already embracing getting into this blue bar. So, so I don't think that they're going to end up in this death spiral, and GenBand is one of the companies that's helping them to make sure that they stay relevant, but they are going to have to embrace over the top and embrace WebRTC and the webification of communications. And I didn't steal this from Serge, I already had it in my presentation before, but it's almost the exact same chart. We are seeing a sea change in how WebRTC and over the top and webification and this new communication movement. Um, a small company, you know, named WhatsApp was acquired by Facebook for 19 billion. That is real new communication value being created. The Verge, uh, I put a story up about Snapchat that you see um, acquiring AdLive. AdLive is a product, is a company that GenBand uses their products to do our Internet Explorer um, plug-in piece. So they're a customer, I mean, we're a customer of theirs. Uh, but they got bought by Snapchat and I think that's indicative of the types of M&A activity that you'll see. You'll see M&A for capability's sake uh, until we get a little bit farther we need, when you'll see M&A for con consolidation's sake. And as Serge said earlier, even well-known magazines like The Economist are starting to cover WebRTC. They had a great half-page article on what is WebRTC, our little technology being put into probably one of the most prominent business magazines in the world. So um, in March, I started doing um, what I call the WebRTC landscape on my personal blog site, CIO, the number two, CMO.com. I used to be a CIO, I used to be a web developer, and this, that's one of the reasons that all of this stuff excites me. So I talk on CIO to CMO a lot about WebRTC, a lot about marketing and, and IT combined, but this has been one of my favorite projects and I personally went to every site, I didn't get every category right, people are still getting me lots of uh, categories that are right and wrong. But what I want to do is kind of walk through what does that landscape look like today? Where are companies? Not necessarily where are they making money because this isn't an ecosystem view, but it's much more about a categorization of companies. And then I'll talk a little bit about what GenBan is doing in some of those areas. So the first major category is enabling technology. Um, browsers, we all know the major browsers that support WebRTC. Plugins, there's several companies that, like I said, like. AdLive and uh, Eyeball that are making browser plugins to solve that problem. I'm, I'm on a mixed WebRTC panel later where we'll discuss that in a little bit more detail. And uh, video codecs, which we know are really Cisco and Google giving their video, video code, giving in quotes, their video codecs away. And then SunTurn and ICE, uh, which requires some um, support to really do that enabling technology. Developer tools and platforms. So I broke developer tools and platforms kind of into two sides and two divisions. The first is API platforms and the second is SDK platforms and the web, web um, I kind of bro broke the API platforms into traditional communication API platforms like Twilio that kind of grew from communication and, and embraced WebRTC and then WebRTC specific API platforms that kind of grew from the ground up. And then, in the web, and then in the SDK side, there are general WebRTC SDKs that help you develop apps and then there are mobile SDKs which I think is a great space and we'll talk about that. Uh, GenBand just announced and did a preview of it last week that we are putting out our own 
uh, developer platform. It's actually going to be more encompassing than just WebRTC. It's going to uh, wrap around some of the technology that Genban has and um, have RESTful APIs to many of the things that we, uh, that we have. So I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. Here's an example of what, you know, Candy can do. Um, just what we've done with SAP Jam is to integrate Candy into uh, a click to talk button that where you can quickly do it. And we're going to be demoing some of our quick starts and the easy uses of Candy later on in the demo. Uh, so if you're here for the demo, I think there's going to be some really cool things that we're going to show in that. The next major category, the blue category, is carrier solutions. And I kind of went down, you know, from kind of the old telco stack or up the telco stack, you know, uh, working my way up. And so the next part is carrier solutions. And these carrier solutions kind of come in three flavors. And I just recently added the CDN box. The first box is the SIP telco gateway. And Genban was one of the leaders in that. And I'll talk about our SIP telco gateway in just a sec. Um, and the second is media servers. And uh, we got to see, um, um, yesterday from Dialogic. Uh, they are one of the key media server companies uh, in their solution. And then the last one that I added was content delivery network because I believe that the CDN category and using the data channel to do CDN peer to peer especially is a big uh, up and coming use of the data channel. And there's several companies that are specifically doing that so I added that. So I want to talk just a little bit about what Genban is doing in this care space. And what we're doing is we created a, a product we call the Spider WebRTC Gateway. Now, when we created it and, and, and we started developing this three and a half years ago, um, and it came out early last year, in January of last year, we, we created, we, we, there really wasn't a WebRTC Gateway and the concept of a WebRTC Gateway wasn't there, but we saw our customers asking us, okay, I like this WebRTC technology, but how do I connect it to the other things that GenBand's doing to, for me? How do I connect it to unified communications? How do I connect it back to my SIP trunks? How do I connect it, how do I make sure that the browsers work and that I can get a stun and turn server? Uh, and kind of give me all that in a box. So we created a purpose-built box. It's not built on our SBC. It's not built on our original gateway. We built a purpose-built box that allows us to, allows the customer to connect the traditional telco services that Genban provides on the left side of the slide to the web services that WebRTC provides on the right side. So it includes everything I've talked about, media mixing, um, SIP trunking. We actually kind of uh, make sure and put a kind of a front door on the SIP trunking so you can use RESTful APIs. You don't have to use WebSockets. We help do all of the signaling layer with signaling RESTful API calls. So all of this is easy to do. And this is one of the major components that we're wrapping up in the Candy platform. So we're really excited about this. So the last category, the green category, out of the four major categories is the enterprise and consumer solutions. And it is the most massive of the chart. It's the one that when I go in, I think, well, should I break these categories up? Because this, this is the one where innovation is happening uh, the quickest. And I believe that it's the one where it will continue to happen because it is the end of the value chain. It is where this technology is touching the consumer and touching the enterprise. So there's a few major categories here. I'll go through them real quickly. Uh, the first is WebRTC UC. So these are companies that have put out WebRTC solutions that do unified communications, that do voice, video, integrate with their existing unified communications. Uh, the second is WebRTC messaging, companies that are just doing messaging with WebRTC. The third is, and I'll go up to the right, is WebRTC video. It's companies that are doing the video portion of unified communications and there are pro that's the biggest category. It's the easiest use case. There's lots of companies that are doing it, many of them doing it great. And lots of them making a business uh, out of that portion. In the lower left is vertical applications. So I believe that vertical applications, that I'll probably have to break that in its own box soon and make it a different color because vertical applications is probably the biggest growing space and I added 80 companies last week when I redid it for the comp quarter and I probably added 12 or 13 in that little bitty box. Uh, so you, cause we continue to see specific vert vertical applications for WebRTC and I think that's going to be a growing area. Then a couple of other boxes, the call center, so besides pure vertical, I broke CRM and call center vertical applications into their own box because there are so many. That's, base, that's use case 1.0 of 
WebRTC as we heard from the last panel and I believe it's going to continue to be an early economic driver for WebRTC. And then finally PBX support and emulation. There are lots of companies um, like Digium, Digium that uh, are supporting Asterisk and its push into WebRTC and I think that that support for legacy PBX type systems like Asterisk and other PBX systems is going to be you know something else that needs to be bridged there. So what does GenBan um, provide in the area of uh, enterprise and consumer applications? We're mostly an enterprise company. So what I wanted to show you is our smart office on the web. We've developed and put out early in the year a full featured unified communication client that is exactly the same features as our tablet client. It has presence and directory services, uh, voice and video calls of course, messaging and presence. Um, I think that it's, you know, I've talked to a lot of analysts and I've looked at a lot of products. I, I truly believe it's the most advanced WebRTC unified communications client. And what that allows our customers to do is to train once and deploy the, deploy the web version, deploy the tablet version, but it's got the same drag and drop. It's got a lot of cool features too, like the ability to take a call and if you're, if you're in a conference call, that's voice only and you want to upgrade that to video, you just click one button and it upgrades that to a video call. Or if video is having problems, you can quickly click a button and go from video to audio. And it remembers your past sessions so if every Monday you do a, a session with the same five people, you can just click on that button and it will call them all instead of having them all call in. So things like that I think are some of the innovations that we put into our WebRTC client and we've somewhat uh, mix that with our tablet client and our WebRTC client to kind of make sure that the features are in parity. So now I want to run through a few use cases that we showed at our show. We had a big show, Perspectives 14, last uh, week in Florida and we showed many of these use cases. Because everybody was going to be eating and they'd have their head down, I decided not to do demos and I also had 30 minutes and I have a lot of use cases to show. So I'm going to run through them but several of these are available in our booth in the back that you can see and we'll also be doing the demo of Candy which I talked about at um, 6.10 tonight. So the first one is this Toy Genius Assisted Shopping and we're really, this, I think this is one of the cool concierge type assisted shopping applications. We had it running with a person uh, in the browser um, working with uh, our, our demo customers as if they were real customers. So um, it is not just uh, bringing a person up in video, it's true assisted shopping. So it allows you to show videos or pictures of toys that people might want to buy in the box that's next to the, to the concierge person. It allows that concierge person to talk back and forth and, and, and figure out what products the person wants put those products in their basket and help them close their shopping cart. So it's truly assisted shopping and I think this type of back and forth um, usage of the, of the concierge is going to be mo much more prevalent as we integrate into these human business moments the technology. But what we also showed last week is we used our Candy mobile SDK to develop the same type of experience on a mobile platform. So the same experience that you had um, on the web now we have in mobile. So we're wrapping the WebRTC and the, the web uh, browser up and creating a client that, they, that the Toy Genius site can put out to their customers. We're showing this back. We have actually used Candy to create a small plug-in for Salesforce. I talked yesterday about the panel. We're working with SAP to integrate with their CRM and some of their uh, social messaging sites that I showed earlier. So we really do feel like CRM edge integration and in the having WebRTC be part of the business process and the business moment is a big portion of what we're going to be um, seeing as we go forward with WebRTC. So here's another version of the mobile concierge that uh, is for a sporting goods site and I wanted to show you this is sort of the basic version of the mobile concierge where you can click to call and get the concierge. But the next uh, part is what, what one of the things that I felt was really cool. So as part of the Candy uh, APIs we have social built in and so what you can do with the API is if you like the backpack that you see in the second picture then you can go on and post a question. Does anyone know anything about this backpack? Can I take it on a plane? Um, and then your network of uh, friends can see and answer in real time. So we've tried to 
put social messaging, video, and voice all together in unique applications, and this is one of those. One other thing, GenBand, and I talked about over the top and WebRTC together because I still feel like these changing communication models are sort of one and the same. Webification, um, over the top applications are solving the same problem, which is how do we communicate better? So last year we bought a company called Fring, which many of you might have known. It was the original over the top voice application. Uh, it was the first Skype on mobile. And it, uh, is very well optimized for, for the web. What GenBand has done, we've left up the consumer part, which was 40 million users using free. Uh, so we left that up and let, kind of put it to the side. It's running, not touch it. But what we added to it is we added a white label version so that we could take it to carriers. And we've sold it into several carriers, such as We Telecom and several others, to use in white label. But what we've now brought to the carriers is a uh, WebRTC desktop version of that same client. So that then the user can, and what's great is it, it, for the carriers we've done the directory services and the no, number, number plans so that they can, keep, they can offer to their customers a single number. So you can be in your country with your number on their mobile service, then you can roam with the freeing client and then if you're at your desk while you're roaming or if you're at your desk and you want to make a call or, or receive a call on your mobile number, you can use the WebRTC client. So we think these kind of mixed modalities, meeting the person in their business moment, are some of the ways that WebRTC is going to be effective in uh, bringing change. So I just wanted to put up quickly, GenBand is continually innovating. We feel like we have moved from a traditional telecommunications equipment vendor that's sold to a lot of carriers we still sell to a lot of carriers and we still sell a lot of traditional telecom equipment. But we're really starting to think of ourselves as a communication software company. And the things that we're doing in WebRTC and unified communications with WebRTC, I believe are leading the field in some, and we've seen that in some of the awards that we've won. So I'm going to spend the next few minutes making predictions and I made these predictions, most of them last week, so uh, might as well repeat them in a much bigger room of, of much more technical people. Um, the first one is ORTC. Um, Microsoft has, has put up on their, been a lot more transparent about what they're doing and are starting to support pieces of WebRTC in their next versions and a candidate version of ORTC, um, which is um, a sibling of WebRTC if you don't know. Um, but I think that my prediction is that ORTC and WebRTC will merge. I'm hoping that we can talk everybody into the same uh, specification uh, so that Microsoft can adopt WebRTC or ORTC combination. Uh, the second one is data channel innovation. I talked about this a little bit earlier when I talked about content delivery, but um, I believe that the data channel may be the secret sauce for WebRTC. Um, the things like the, the concierge where you're using data um, in an application are easy to see, but what we don't see are the pure data channel applications. So there have been a lot of uh, things, in fact, um, earlier it was mentioned about Pipe, which is a cool peer-to-peer -peer file sharing inside of Facebook. I met with a Pipe guy, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, but there's been a lot of other file sharing applications and file uh, uh, sharing um, systems. Uh, I do think that the data channel is some place where there is creative uses and second generation and third generation usage usages for WebRTC that we haven't thought of yet. So I think there's going to be a lot of creativity in the next year or two in the data channel um, and I think that you will see that um, we'll, we, we can't even envision some of the things that are going to come out of the, out of the data channel. So Mozilla just announced with TalkBox that they're integrating WebRTC in the cloud at, and I think the TalkBox uh, team talked about that yesterday. Uh, I think that that is a trend that's going to continue. I think um, you're going to continue to see uh, Chrome and Firefox integrating voice and video and real-time communication services more deeply into their browsers and into their operating systems because um, it's creating, it's getting closer to the ecosystem and, and having a push to talk button within the browser as opposed to a part of a web page has some major advantages to them on user capture and I think that you'll continue to see that and applications and some other, um, there's, a, there's a churn there that we haven't gotten through yet. So I think you'll continue to see that. 
I think you'll also see WebRTC be uh, wrapped in a container more and specifically more for mobile. The, the limitations that we have because of browser ad adoption patterns are not limiting us from doing Mayday type applications where we have specific applications that are wrapped in a mobile container but use the full HTML5, WebRTC stack, um, security, much of the security for WebRTC is, is, is some of the best out there. So it's very, you know, I think that having a wrapped program, uh, purpose built applications either on the desktop or more specifically on mobile is something that we're going to see more and more of. And then finally I made a, a prediction last week that Microsoft and Apple um, would both um, adopt WebRTC in the next 18 months. And what I said specifically is that they will commit to, eight, to, to it in their uh, software in the next 18 months, so by the end of next year. I still feel that that's true. I've, and the reason I feel that is because I think the market is going to pass them by if they're not careful. I think the hype is, is, is a lot, but the business movement is even more intense on how WebRTC and web communications and over the top communications. So even though they're protecting their home base with Skype and FaceTime and uh, to a certain extent um, uh, afraid to embrace WebRTC, I believe that the market pressures are going to make them have to have some movement here and I think that that's going to be um, um, sooner rather than later. The market movement is, is sooner rather than later. So Desai is not here this week, but I stuck up his quote because it's one of my favorite ones, that WebRTC is less of a standard and more of a movement. I think that this room is a testament to that, and I certainly am a testament to that. Um, I, I actually don't have much to do with WebRTC in my day-to-day -day job anymore, but it's really kind of my hobby. Uh, I love it that much. Uh, so I'm really excited to be part of that movement. Um, just a quick note about Candy. Candy will have out in September. We already are in... It is our platform as a service. Um, we'll have a lot of cool features, but it hook, hooking back up to not only our WebRTC gateway and its RESTful APIs, but many more RESTful APIs that hook back into the GenBand systems. And we feel like it's going to be a great um, help for our telco providers that are traditional customers, but also to enterprises and to developers. Um, I, we really think that there is a spot still left in the, in the API market for um, telco-centric and very robust APIs that kind of span the gamut past what, API, what WebRTC is doing in its APIs. So we're really excited to put it out. We're starting, you know, we didn't put a press release out. It sort of a, was a sneak preview last week and sort of my preview that we'll do in the demo this afternoon. But beyond that, we're going to kind of keep it under wraps. We do have all the technology working. We're working on some of the commercial parts of it still. So we're really excited. We've been working on it since January. We brought in Paul Plushkel, who is um, a venture, a, a startup guy who uh, lives in Santa Clara. And he is, uh, has his own team. We've moved everybody that was doing cloud and WebRTC and, and all of our new technology underneath Paul and so he's done a great job getting this product uh, up and running and we're really, really excited about it. So with that I want to tell you thank you and if you would like to know more I'm continually blogging and tweeting and thinking about WebRTC so follow me on Twitter at, at jbradleybush or come to my site at cio to cmocom and if you want to know more about what GenBan is specifically doing with WebRTC, there's not much on Candy yet. Last week's preview and this week's preview are about all that you're going to get. But if you want to know more about Spider or what we're doing on the other parts, you can go to go.genband.com slash webrtc. So with that, I'd like to tell you thank you for letting me be here for lunch with you. And uh, I love WebRTC. Thanks. <laughs>